Hi there everyone, have a look at this. It's an Iguanodon, one of the more famous dinosaurs. We are here again at the Bournemouth Natural Science Society and today we're with a curator called Ray who's in charge of all this amazing stuff in this room and on loads of other floors. And Ray, today you're going to talk to us about Iguanodon and then you're going to show us something pretty amazing, aren't you? Yeah, certainly will. What was the Iguanodon? How big was it? The one of our trackway was probably about three metres tall. So there's no way it would fit in this room. You wouldn't get it down It'd here. You'd touch the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, and you've kind of given away what today's video is going to be about. I certainly have. Because it's yeah. a trackway and James, it's right behind you. This is a track. Is this a fossil? It's called a trace fossil because it's a trace of where he went. It's slightly confusing looking at it because you're looking at the underside. Okay. So if you'd have been on the beach when he made these footprints, it would have looked like that one over there. Oh, okay. That's a cast off of the one of the footprints. Can I hold this thing? Yeah, certainly. Oh, okay, so there we go. So we're seeing the underside. So this was on a beach, was it, this footprint? Yeah, it was like that. It was a lagoon. And this was something like between 150 and 130 million years ago in the Purbeck beds. Trackways are not rare in the Purbeck. They're found quite often. What is the Purbeck? That's the piece of land around Swanage okay. that goes right down to the coast. So yes, you find footprints, you find fossils. Very rarely do you find dinosaur bones. Right. So the dinosaurs, didn't live there, they were in transit. Okay. You find lots of dinosaur bones on the Isle of Wight okay. in the same sediment. That's an interesting fact. I don't, I don't know why. This lagoon must have just been where they would go for holidays yeah, or something. It must have been, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This was actually found near Swanage in Hurston Quarry. It was dug out by the quarrymen in 1961 and it was taken to a garden and it sat in the garden for some years, a man called Burry. But over the years, it got overgrown, there was ivy over it, it was actually deteriorating. So my predecessor in this department actually um, said, you ought to have that in a museum. Yep. So she convinced him and it was brought here. And it was set up in the actual same configuration as it had been originally. In those days, you didn't have the dinosaur um, enthusiasm that you do today. The 60s were somewhat different. Yeah. I, I know that because I was around. Okay. <laughs> How would this have actually formed? What's happened then? The, presumably the iguanodon has pressed its foot into the sand. Absolutely. And then off it went. Yeah. The footprint has been left there, but didn't, what stops like the tide coming in and washing it away? Yeah, like, did something instant happen to preserve it? The lagoon wasn't terribly tidal, so it probably would have sat there for some time, so it would have gone quite hard. It's very lime rich, this, um, okay. this sediment. So it sort of would have been like muddy sand and it just would have dried out. Dried yeah. out, yeah. So, okay. so the next time the, a wave came in, it brought a lot of sediment with it and actually filled up the hole that the footprint had made. Okay. So you've got a series on the end there, you've got a series of sediment layers. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. And that's where he would have trod on this one. And then it filled up afterwards over many right. years. What's happened to all the other sand and mud around it? When they dug it out, that piece would have detached, but left this, which is the later sediment. That's just like a natural place for it to split. Yeah, that's oh. right, yeah. But this trackway in particular isn't just any one though, this is a bit of a special one. Yeah, this is special. Because of the definition of the footprints, it was realised that they were important to actually define other trackways. So this became what they call the holotype. It's called Iguanodontipus, which is Iguanodon foot burii, burri being the man whose garden it was in. Anywhere in the world you see a trackway like that, it's called Iguanodontipus burii. This is the original this, absolutely. Iguanodon footprint. Yeah, that's the importance as far as we're concerned. As far as school children, when they come here, what's important is it's a dinosaur. <laughs> you mentioned we can glean that it's three metres high. Right, if you measure across the footprint and you multiply it by four, you work out the height to the hip. Yeah. So if you put him down, yeah, here we go. that's his height to there. Okay, yeah. And that's about one and a half metres. So if you say hip height to head height, that's two to one. He was about three metres high. That's a juvenile. Juvenile? Yeah. They could go up to four metres. Also, if you measure across two sets of footprints between that one and that one. Because this isn't the same foot. These are alternating feet. Yeah, they're are alternating, they? yes. So absolutely. that's the second. Th those two are matching, are they? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So um, if you measure across those, yeah. do some sums, you can work out how fast he was going. Yeah. And he was just out for a stroll because the faster they go, the further apart the footprints are. So it's a young dinosaur 
Oh, on a Sunday afternoon, out for a stroll. All right. Wow. How can you tell it was a Sunday afternoon? Oh, well, yeah, that's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> You've got so much amazing stuff here in this building and in all these cases. How does this rank in your list of favourite stuff? It's favourite because it's important. It is what it is. It's, it's the holotype and gives us a small claim to fame. That's a huge, <laughs> that's a well, huge that's claim that's to fame. Look at the size of it. The other thing that's important on this is not the, just the footprints. So you see these? These lines there, yeah. that's where things have bored through the sediment. Crabs, lobsters, sea urchins, things like that. Yeah. So, so again, they're trace fossils. I've got a, a trace fossil here. This is about 180 million years old. There's a trace where some mollusk or other worked its way across the trackway 180 million years ago. Mm. You talk about imagination. They have wave ripples where the tide went in. Just like we see on the beach now, but this is just a, a moment in time from all those years Absolutely. ago. Absolutely. Do you ever, when you're walking around, like, you know, whatever you're doing, collecting fossils out in nature, and you're walking in slightly muddy ground, leaving your footprints, do you ever think, gosh, I wonder if that one's going <laughs> to yeah, yeah, get fossilised? Yeah, yeah, you do, yes. Yeah, um, I mean, that's interesting. There's another trace fossil there. Yeah. They're, they're mud cracks. It's fossilised mud, and it's cracked in the sun. Just one particular day it cracked? Yeah. And, and yeah. I've been out to places where it's very muddy and it's dry and you see exactly the same thing today. A geology sediment is continuing. It never stops. I think it was Hutton said that the present is the key to the past. You look at what's happening today and you then figure out what happened then. I can't believe that you've actually got me excited about fossilised <laughs> mud cracks. <laughs> there you go, people. <laughs> but the dinosaur footprints are better. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Hover, the place to go to register any domain name. It's affordable, the site's really well designed, it's easy to use. Register the name of your choice, which can then simply be attached to any website, a pre-existing one or one you're working on, or you could divert it somewhere else to say your Twitter or YouTube channel, or you could just sit on it until a rainy day. Really great interface, I use it all the time. A few clicks and the job's done. Have a look at that. For 10% off your first Hover purchase, go to hover.com slash objectivity. Seriously, I use Hover all the time. I really recommend them. And thanks to them for supporting this episode of Objectivity. The technique that I'm using is a gentle enzymatic treatment. Uh, that's what I would have suggested. Otherwise known as human spit. <laughs> Right. And saliva is actually used in conservation all the time. It's a really gentle cleaning agent. It's 99% water, 1% yeah. enzymes, and it's the enzymes that break down the dirt, so... Wow, you weren't joking. Mm. Under the tongue. Is this like a known like, technique? Yeah. Or... Let's do a little section here. 